Hey everybody, welcome. Josh RV Nerd here with the 9320 pound uh, Eagle HT 28.5 RSTS. Rear sofa, triple slide. Sometimes people like to know what those letters mean. Sometimes they mean something. Sometimes they just sort of, I swear they mean just gobbledygook. <laughs> uh, this is, I think, the most popular Eagle HT of all of the Eagle HTs. And it's also the smallest you can really make a fifth wheel that still has opposing super slides in the living room, like a full dedicated kitchen entertainment slide, a full dedicated like uh, theater seat dining slide. One thing I wanna make, uh, I wanna make sure we make a point to hit on early in this video though, and I hope you appreciate this. I don't really consider this uh, a, a, a half ton towable kind of fifth wheel, not for the general half ton. There are a very small select number of very beefy half tons that can theoretically handle this, but that is not the half ton pickup that about 99% of the population possesses. I wanna, I, I wanna put that information out there, I wanna make that clear because we will always put your safety before the sale at our facility here. We're family owned and operated and we are not going to get your family hurt just to make a quick buck. Um, we also don't do hidden dealer fees, so you know we try to be safe and easy. It's, it's nice to have both. Um, the uh, This floor plan has a, a mirror twin called a 30.5, which has all of the windows on the door side. You might notice as we go, this one does not. I think though, it, it works in the case of this one, because I think that when you wanna be inside, you're just inside and you're okay and you enjoy that extra space. I think that when you're outside, because this one has a uh, uh, form of a camp kitchen in the slide out, it's like, you don't need the windows on the door side because you spend time outside. The, the windows don't have to be there. and. That might not work for everybody. I totally get that. But uh, if you want that camp kitchen over here, th then you have to lose the windows. But the benefit is not only do you get the camp kitchen, you also keep the RV shorter, lighter, less expensive as a result because you can't just necessarily always flip flop slides. It makes the RV too darn long. It's a very creative, very crafty floor plan. And again, I love that Jayco makes it both ways. I'll leave you links in the video description. You can check that out. And as we go, let me know the highs and the lows, what you think of her, your favorite aspects, the things that you'd like to see change. And if you haven't done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button, knowing that you're going to get some fair information from us here. All right, so where most manufacturers kind of just shoehorn you into a specific decor, one of the nice things about Jayco is they give you two options. It's not like the old, what was it, the Model T, any color you like as long as it's black. Now this is the Craftsman Decor, which is three beautiful shades of brown, brown and browner. That being said, it is, it, it's, it's got some nice lighter contrast that it's got sort of, I call it like a Reese's peanut butter cup. What is, what is going, is that Spider-Man? Okay, <laughs> I thought Peter Parker joined us for a minute there. That's Mr. Mike Iraka, thankfully. Uh, he is uh, not bitten by a radioactive spider as uh, like Mr. Peter Parker, but he um, is one of our uh, part specialists and he's actually one of the guys that helps uh, make sure everything's on the up and up when the RVs arrive. It, actually, right now as I'm filming, this RV is still hooked up to the Jayco factory delivery driver's truck and uh, we are just very proactive about things. He's up there checking roof seal points, making sure there's not like abnormal bubbling uh, in the uh, the roof membrane and all kinds of stuff like, you know, making sure the roof trusses are standing up, all, all those sorts of things to make sure everything looks good for you. Uh, what was I? Sorry, that really threw me off. Oh, decors. Um, this is the the uh, Craftsman decor, but they also, of course, offer that modern farmhouse, which uh, is that, you know, kind of white and grays and the distressing accents and all kinds of, well, not, not the distressed, not distressing, you know what I mean, I'm sorry, it's early, whatever. Um, uh, adopted in the 21 season, they went completely carpetless with all of their flooring. Any carpet you see somewhere might just be covering like a little structure point or something like that. Uh, the uh, Actually, at this point, every single Jayco travel trailer and fifth wheel has carpetless flooring, even in their stick and tins. They become very uh, advanced and progressive uh, about that. And I, I like, again, the constant updates this floor plan has undergone over the years. Like, uh, this used to be a couple uh, individual rocking recliners, but they were straight across from the TV. So that never made as much sense to me as a theater seat. If the chair has to turn, recliner makes sense to me. If it doesn't have to turn, why are we doing uh, a recliner, not just a theater seat? Um, I don't know, make, makes, a, makes a little bit sense to me. Maybe I'm crazy like that. Now back here, uh, another nice new for 22 update is the adoption of the blackout roller shades. And obviously you see back here, it's a couple's rig, but if one of your buddies stays over and has one too many ties one on, 
you do have yourself a, a nice little guest bed back there. And something that's not as obvious because these are a little bit dark on dark, both side stands have the same sealed edge press membrane material and both side stands have both household and USB plugs, which is, uh, I think, actually really, really nice. There's something else Jayco's are really good for. Uh, like, right there is a little light switch. Under that rear overhead cabinet is a light switch. You don't have to go clickety-clacking uh, all the way from front to back in on this thing. Um, I don't, I'm sorry, it's early. That was so stupid. <laughs> Oh, the electric space heating footsie frying bunion burner tootsie toaster, whatever I feel like calling it today. And uh, straight across from us, I mean, you know, I'm at the left-hand theater seat, and when I'm not cranking the camera on, that's your straight-on view. That is the definition of no neck wrecker entertainment center. But what if you're back here on the little cuddlicious, uh, you know, hide-a-bed where uh, maybe you just want to stretch and lounge a little bit? What, what about there? And the answer to that is, uh, <laughs> I think this is an even easier viewing center. If you're nearsighted, you could be right up in this thing's face. <laughs> so it can be, you know, uh, a little cuddlicious couch if you and the uh, the, the loved ones want to kind of just all bundle up here and get all close with one another. It could be a lounging couch, a napping couch, a hide bed. Um, it could be a little conversation corner between you and the uh, the folks in the theater seat right over here, because that's... Uh, like, it feels kind of tucked into the corner, but, like, if I sit back down over here, you see that you're not really, like, losing line of sight with anybody. Like, it's it's a very social seating arraignment. Uh, arraignment? Nope, that's a totally different... I don't think anybody is very happy on a social arraignment. <laughs> oh, I need to get back on the Mountain Dew so that I can wake up earlier in the morning. Um, <clears throat> enough about that. Uh, this comes with one of my favorite dining arrangements. It's a two plus two seating arrangement where most of the time it's just a couple's camper, but you do have, uh, you know, a, uh, a guest space right there. Um, the, uh, again, if you have friends, family, if someone's just coming over playing cards, but most of the time you can get those extra two chairs just like out of the way, which is uh, pretty darn cool, I think. Now, I think we've pretty much canvassed the, the lower area of this and uh, time to start cracking open the kitchen space. Because I pity the food, don't open the kitchen. <laughs> and there are feet to her. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, the uh, little things too, like Jayco runs an extra HDMI cord up here in Never Neverland and it's not for Peter Pan and Tinkerbell, it's in case you want to add something like a Blu-ray player or a satellite unit or something like that so that you don't have to go fishing wiring through a cabinet that you frankly can't see and can't access easily. They just make that simpler. Uh, by the way, in case you just want to like plug in a Roku stick or Fire Stick or something, there is an HDMI plug on the front of that soundbar. There's also some available on the back of the TV. Like there's a lot of different things you could do here. Now what we're looking at right here is the um, 12 volt DC compressor fridge upgrade. Standard, this floor plan would have an eight cubic foot gas electric, which may still be uh, a good option for you if what you're looking for is a little more boondock off-grid friendliness. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still thinking about Mr. T. Um, did you know that guy is like a massive humanitarian? He like he builds houses for people. He had a show where he was doing that for a while called, uh, appropriately enough, Pity the Fool. Uh, you know, huh? it, I, I guess kind of like me, when you find a shtick that works, you just sort of stick with it, right? But he does a lot of good for a lot of people. Old B.A. Baracus. Although, you know, he was actually a bodyguard. He was a bona fide B.A. before he was the Baracus is the best way that I can say it. Now, this wall right here, this is an area this RV has seen massive improvements over previous years. It used to have just this open air kind of um, closet and bench right there. But one of the things I like that they did is they, they enclosed it to make it extra like mega pantry space. Although, obviously, as you saw with what's called that Mervin shelf, the flip up shelf. Um, named after the guy that made it. Uh, just a simple magnet and a hinge, but boy, does it work. You can convert that between a closet or a pantry and I, I think flawless execution of that island, leaving us a space for a wastebasket while still having shelving for like the little dish soaps. And you haven't really seen uh, kitchen drawers until we got there. That to me is just uh, a Mortal Kombat flawless victory. Now, normally at this point, I jump up into the bathroom. I just felt like shaking things up today. 
uh, I don't know, just sometimes seeing something a little different, maybe from a different angle. I'm going to go about this whole upper deck in a, in a just different twisty, turny fashion, you know. Uh, one of the things I want to point out right away right here is what we're looking at is a 70 by 80 king bed instead of the standard 60 by 80 queen. The, one of the major reasons that we do that, um, I, I know that it, it limits walk around space around the bed a little bit. You can still get around it. But if you want to size down to a queen, it's super, super easy. If you have a queen and want to size up to a king, that's a bit of a project. And uh, if that is your interest, this will actually save you some money long term, effectively. It's just kind of the way it works out because of the way that it saves labor time. Now, it's, it's kind of easy to miss them, but both sides of the bed have these little side stands. And there are just little storage pockets down there. But um, one of my little RV nerdisms is those are like elephant enema pockets. To get in those things completely, it kind of looks like an el you're giving an elephant an enema. <clears throat> but um, <laughs> the, uh, the thing is they don't actually go all the way up to the wall because they're partially covering some of the corner structure and gusseting that helps keep this whole thing held together. Now, both of the uh, side stands have their own household and USB outlets, which is really cool. And uh, something else that's really neat here is the way that Jayco has maintained a, uh, a window in their closet slides. Most manufacturers, when you get a closet slide like this, uh, you lose a window, you lose the cross breeze. Now this is 50 amp, so there is a vent above the bed that could be sacrificed for a second air conditioner. And on a coach this size, uh, it's, it, I, I really, I acknowledge a lot of people who say, you know, uh, I, I think that you should just be throwing a second air on that. There are times in the past that we definitely have. Keep in mind, the one that we're looking at, like we're looking at the uh, the craftsman decor today, although the bedroom will always be craftsman and the uh, kitchen will always, or I'm sorry, the bathroom will always be farmhouse. We're actually going to see a little snippet of that in just a moment here. But there, uh, the, the one that we have in stock could be different from this. It's very possible that we'll have some dual air versions of this uh, in stock at any time. Now, naturally, um, across from the uh, master bed here, we've got our TV hookups. One of the other things I haven't talked about, though, is this has the J command system. It's got one of those smarty pants uh, systems you can talk to on your phone, but you don't have to. There's still just a light switch. That is also, the J command is your, like, thermostat, as it were. That is a thermal sensor called a thermistor that's actually doing some checking for us. There's a couple little details, though. By going at this from a little different direction, I like to point out, like, you can see right here how there's no, like, floor vent up here in the, uh, the bedroom. It is a side heating vent. Now, if you watch a lot of my videos, you know that that may mean it doesn't provide quite as much uh, heating capacity, but this is a smaller space, and I think it will be more than sufficient for this little space right here. Um, oh, you know what? We haven't looked under the bed. And uh, this is another thing that relates to the king versus queen thing. Um, the bed base is always queen sized. All you're going to do if you want to size down, just shave some plywood. It's super, super easy by comparison. This is easy lift, and it, it kind of showcases one of the other silent updates that they applied to this. They redesigned those chairs to stack up a little bit better and be more streamlined, so they eat up less of your storage space. Those things used to be hogs. They would eat up almost everything under that bed. Now, as we come over here into the bathroom, uh, the sink area is a little blue, da ba dee da ba doo. It, uh, it's got like a nautical kind of thing here. And uh, if you know anything about me, you, you probably know there's a 75% chance that right now, I'm thinking of the, when I hear nautical stuff, I start thinking of SpongeBob SquarePants. Like, I, I'm, I'm not even lying. I can hear that song going on in my head right now, but enough about that. If that, that should tell you a lot about me right there. Sealed edge countertops through here, which I didn't talk about this in the kitchen. Hang on. Did you notice in the kitchen how this has a solid surface countertop? That's not normal in these HTs. That's something that's been kind of an available option for a while. But the, uh, the material that uh, is used in the core, the MDF core inside a sealed edge press membrane countertop has been a little difficult to get a hold of. So Jayco said, okay, in the biggest area where we're using the largest chunk of this, we are going to go ahead and just swap people up to a solid surface upgrade. A lot of respect for them for doing that. They could have dropped down to a T mold and made excuses. Instead, they stepped up, gave us something better. And I think that really speaks volumes about who you're doing business with here. And uh, 
Figure we should probably see the rest of the bathroom since we've only seen part of it. Sorry I'm jumping around a little bit today. That thing with the countertop, though, I think is an important thing to mention because, uh, you know, I, I, I want to make sure I'm setting good expectations to our videos. Uh, this uses a different kind of Max Air vent fan up there. That's a, It's a cool little built-in sort of rain blocker. And um, we're not going to talk about what's going on right here. Because that's a drunken octopus fight club. You see these guys? Those are drunken octopi. And uh, really the only rule of drunken octopus fight club is you just don't talk about it. Um, so let's let's move on to the toilet, shall we? Uh, the uh, you got to remember this toilet is really designed to have that sliding privacy door um, closed to get it out of the way. or It gets the uh, toilet paper holder out of the way, which is an interesting place for that, but it actually works very well. And there's uh, surprisingly good room around this, not just good leg room, but like hip, shoulder space, all that stuff. And uh, really kind of jumping into the trend that a lot of folks have, pardon the antifreeze down in the shower pan, by the way, that won't be there when you go to take your RV home, that stuff that will get cleaned out for you. But that clear shower door makes the whole room look and feel bigger. And along with that white shower enclosure, you see that blue little nightlight up top right here. That will uh, give you an easy like navigation of the whole room at night. It'll cause the whole shower to uh, uh, effectively glow. Now, uh, we'll, we'll talk more on that in just a second, but real quick, a look at the headroom up in here, perfectly sufficient for someone like me, about 6'3", and that's with shoes and hat. But one of the other things I wanna point out is behind the mirror. This is, again, I'm coming at things from a different angle today. You get to see the backlighting behind the mirror right there. So if you don't like the blue dabba dee dabba do uh, Coors Light, well, you can just have a, a, a gizmo mogwai white light back here. <laughs> mogwai! And apparently, I can do a spot on gizmo voice. Gizmo, mogwai, HBO. Oh, yeah. Okay, um, new power unlocked. <laughs> Excellent. Let's look at road mode. <laughs> now when that slide closes, it'll do the work for you. It'll just shove that mattress over. But remember, between those uh, upper hanging stands, you basically always have about a, a, you know, a queen bed size. So even though part of this mattress is covered by that overhang, if you have to make a travel stop, you effectively still have at least a queen bed if, if not the fact that you've got the extra width over here to kind of roll and flop around and i got a question for you guys i keep meaning to ask this and i just i constantly uh forget about it over here in the bathroom when you travel do you leave the shower head up or do you put the shower head down i feel like if it's down it's going to kind of jiggle bang around on the floor but i feel like if it's up this thing's a rolling earthquake even despite the nice, you know, more ride suspension shackle dampening, blah, 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 that we'll talk about outside, it still feels like a, a little bit of a rolling earthquake to me. Um, the big question on this one is, yeah, what about travel accessibility? And by default, out of the box, this one doesn't really have a whole lot of kitchen action going on, but hear me out on this. In case you're curious, it's currently about uh, 6.30 a.m. I got to work thinking, I'll get ahead. Uh, I'll catch up. And there was a friendly neighborhood Jayco driver waiting for me. So I just jumped right on this thing. But what I was getting at when I said, hear me out. You don't even need to fully deploy that kitchen slide to be able to get to the fridge. And it's a cable slide system, which is good at handling kitchen slide weight. And it can be partially deployed if need be. And the other thing is, if you can open these steps then you can open the kitchen slide. Now, thankfully, these are the, what I call David Blaine magic steps. So you can, uh, you know, only partially open them if need be. And uh, apparently I bumped the lights on my way out because my, my parents instilled in me, turn the lights off when you leave a room. So, hey dad, <laughs> I was listening. <laughs> but like I said, even if you only partially open that slide out, if you can put the steps down, you can partially deploy the slide. So I, I, I get that out of the box, you don't just open the door and grab anything. You gotta push one more button. But the fact is, if you have to make an extended travel stop, this one can still service you. Again, provided you can actually even get into the camper. Now I figured today we could start from the bottom and work our way up. I'm doing everything different, why stop now? You can see the enclosed underbelly. What you can't see is how it's insulated forced air heated, how it actually has radiant barrier material through the belly, the slides, the nose cap, and the roof. 
and that handy little sewer hose caddy right there. That is a new for 22 feature, and I think that a lot of people are going to say, man, that is really overdue, but they're doing it. Uh, I'll give them credit that they're getting it done. Not that they didn't do it in the past, but that they listened. They said, you want it? You got it, guys. Uh, we've got that galvanized uh, rolled steel docking center over here. This RV, did you notice under the bed there was one of those little blue coily hoses that has the little kind of garden sprayer handle on it? That can hook up right in there. Um, and it's nice that all of our holding tanks and our, and our gate valves and everything, they're enclosed, they're protected, they're heated. And all of that kind of rolls into the fact that uh, what Jayco calls their climate shield package. That is their name for what a lot of people call Four Seasons, which is what I call zero to 100 degree rated. I dislike the name Four Seasons because uh, I, I feel like you want to put a quantifier on there because RVs are only made with specific uh, intentions in mind. Th this is not something that's like intended to necessarily like, oh, you want to go to Alaska Arctic camping, it's going to be negative a billion on Mars. It doesn't have an atmospheric re-entry package. No RV does. But in terms of anything this size and class, Eagles actually tout uh, some of, if not the very best, tested, proven weather ratings you can get out there. Uh, it's they, What they do is very good and very impressive. I just want people to, again, have that proper expectation. Now, if you got a short bed pickup, you may really like this. This comes with a standard turning point hitch. If activated, it doesn't have to be. Um, it, uh, it can just stay in a fixed straight mount position right now, but it might save you, like say a thousand bucks on a, a slider hitch that you could potentially in, uh, avoid depending on your bed size. Now over there on the right-hand side, there's room for four batteries. The left is just a general storage chest, but you notice how it's suspiciously sized uh, like a generator, that's not an accident. You can get what's called their dry camping package on this. It generator preps that housing. It also adds an additional 30 pound propane tank for 50% more propane total capacity, which is very cool. Eagles, weirdly, cannot have a factory uh, generator installed, only prep. Uh, I've had a couple weird explanations given to me that all sound kind of like we're just reaching for uh, explanations. I've never heard one that really made sense to me, but neither here nor there. One of the benefits of working with us at our facility is we are effectively right down the street from Onan, the massive generator supplier to the RV industry. We can ship this thing down and have an Onan factory install done if needed, which is kind of cool. Now notice in here, none of that uh, you know, musty gonna cause the uh, the mildew smell carpet in here. That's the same rubberized uh, industrial flooring that you find in a uh, like a seismic garage, you know. Up top, we've got the double sided radiant barrier material because Jayco doesn't use a single layer hot dog paper, which is better than nothing. They just use the better stuff effectively. Um, and they use it, I mean, everywhere basically. Motion lighting on both sides of the pass through and in the um, docking station, by the way. And the little TV hookups, the intention there is you can feed those right down through this and keep that baggage door closed. Now, you remember that coily sprayer hose I was telling you about? You can also pull that right over here next to the door, which seems kind of like an odd position for it until you've actually gone camping. And you know that sometimes it's really, really nice to be able to hose your feet off or clean the kids' feet off before they go wandering through the trailer. Like maybe you've got a grandkid or just a guest or something like that. I don't know. And there's some sites, man, that are just really, really sandy. It's nice to keep that crud off your feet. Now over here, I, I, I actually kind of hesitate to call this a camp kitchen. I think we're, I, I'm also not a person that really feels I need to put a lot of stock in labels. Um, I, I think that labels maybe help us identify things, but I think that we, we, we put too much uh, emphasis on them. Call it a camp kitchen, call it a convenience center, call it whatever you want. The only thing it lacks that a camp kitchen would normally have is a sink. And, you, and you're like, why, why, wouldn't they, why wouldn't they do that? Frankly, because this thing is, um, it, it's mounted in the slide. And a fifth wheel already sits up higher than a conventional travel trailer. Um, now we're gonna mount this thing up a couple inches higher in a slide out. And now there's not room through the slide floor to be mounting plumbing this low to the slide floor. They basically just couldn't put an effective sink in here because uh, I don't know how else to say this, just to give you a reference point. It would basically be as high as your chesticles, okay guys? It would be all up here in your face. You'd be splashing water all over yourself. I do like though, easy reach power outlets, and you might notice 
TV hookups in here. This is designed. If you want to mount a TV out here and have an outdoor entertainment station, you can, which is, I think, very, very cool. I also like that they got the uh, what used to be the Capitol Grill out of here, which just created an extra drawer space, which is so handy. But you didn't lose the cooker. This comes standard with the, uh, I believe it's the 17-inch Blackstone, and it mounts back here on the J-Port. Unfortunately, all the Blackstones at the time of this filming are locked in container ships somewhere overseas or off the coast of our uh, country right now. Once they come in, they will basically be sent to you at no additional charge. You don't have to go buying one uh, or anything like that. But that little J-Port back there, it's just like the receiver hitch on the back of this trailer. It can hold a lot of weight. So there's hammock accessories, there's chairs, there's waste baskets, there's little picnic prep tables. There's a lot of things that you can do with that. And I suppose with the, uh, the the towing hitch on the back of this, a 3,000 pound towing hitch, you could like, I don't know, you could do double hammocks or double tables or <laughs> anything you want. Of course, you could always just use this for a bike rack. I would definitely recommend not using your uh, bike rack off the side of the RV. I think that is most definitely going to be uh, best used on the, um, uh, the rear area there. And speaking of the back, we have the uh, J Smart lighting package. That is uh, signals, markers, and reverse travel. So basically, you shift into reverse. The taillights have white elements that ignite to make it very easy to see. If you flip on your left-hand signal, uh, let me let me get you kind of uh, up here a little bit. If you flip on that left-hand signal, what's kind of cool is the uh, marker lights all the way down the side of the trailer will blink right along with that, so that other people have a clue what you're doing. Now they use, I didn't point this out on the inside, I don't think, but even like beside the sofa, beside the chairs, every window that uh, you see here in the slides or anything, I think the only window in this that doesn't open for airflow is just the one in the door. I could be wrong in that, but basically every window in this thing is going to open up. Um, you know, I should have talked about this. We started low and we were gonna end high, but now I gotta go back low. Sorry about that. We can't talk about a Jayco without talking about their Goodyear Endurance radial tires. Um, that is arguably a best in class feature. It's the only American made tire used in the towable RV industry. And new for 22, these have standard TPMS. It actually communicates through that J command. So the same system that you could use to like open your slides, open your awning, run your lights, is also your TPMS and your thermostat. Like one app can really do nearly everything on this RV, which is really, really nice. And sometimes I gotta ask myself, is that the sun or is that just the glare coming off of my balding five head? Nearly a six head at this point. We'll get the uh, camera pointed up away from that because we're up here on the roof of this eagle where we're walking on plywood, which is one of the most uncommon things I've seen in the RV industry. It's like there's only so many suppliers, like eventually someone else is gonna use the same oven, someone else is gonna use the same steps or whatever. Nearly no other brands, especially in this class and category. Uh, frankly, I'm not really aware of pretty much anybody in this category that is using uh, plywood roof decking. Is one of it's it's really the start of Jayco's Magnum Trust roof system, and it's why this holds more weight than anything else in this class. Although there's plenty of perfectly, I'm not really actually even aware of any fifth wheel that doesn't have at least a walkable roof. This is just. Like, you can just let the snow pile up on this and not have to clean it off, which is nice. Um, the uh, the white thing here, that is the, the vent cover over that bathroom vent fan. And right next to that, uh, that is our roof solar prep plug. Every single uh, Jayco travel trailer and fifth wheel is at least roof solar prepped. The charge controller in this, the wiring prep point, is located in the, uh, the pass-through. Like, uh, on the door side, if you open up the baggage door and look just to your left, there's a panel that can be removed right there because there's access wiring for that. They made it really easy to get to. That's something else Jayco does in the belly I forgot to talk about. Dag nabbit! Where there's going to be something like where they have a rack and pinion slide where the motor's enclosed in the underbelly, they actually create access panels down there so you don't have to take a shop razor and cut it off and then duct tape it back up. God forbid this needs work. You can do work on it and put everything back and it doesn't look like you hillbilly jerry rigged this thing together, now does it? Oh god, okay, look what I discovered, look at this. <laughs> this, this, is like, this is like a funhouse mirror. I feel like Beldar Conehead, nabs, nabs. Now, just in case you're wondering why this is wobbly, this isn't actually glass. 
This is actually a liquid chalkboard. So um, here in your kitchen, this is our pantry door. If you wanted to, you could make this like a list like, hey, remember, put on your socks, then your shoes, Josh, because that's a mistake that I have. Ned, Ned.